the thing is people don't look at language and um, social constructs like love and dating. They all think it's, oh, it's just Valentine's Day cards and love hearts and oh, having a good chat up. Like, and it isn't actually, it's a, it's, it is a social construct. I look at it like a piece of technology or a thing. Yes. You know, and then when you actually start to examine where the parameters are, and often I find where the parameters are by looking and listening to language, yes. then you can pull it apart and start maneuvering yeah. it around. But don't you understand, you're so brilliant that you can do this, and I'm so brilliant that I can do this, but most of the people need a lot of instruction on how to do it. Right, and I don't It comes think, naturally to you, I think. Right, but I, I, so that's what makes me happy with instruction. Because I think before someone can start to, you know, the concept, for instance, most people that actually, those beliefs that you hold around dating and love and about how things should be in social practices and how you talk to you, that all can be complete junk. You can literally... Oppressive can junk. junk. Oppressive junk. Very oppressive. Most people can't look at it that way. So in the beginning, actually, if you give people little exercises or tools or skills that they can use and they can start to shift outside of their normal patterns of behavior, then they can grow and then they can actually accept more parts of themselves and they actually express more freedom in the end. Yes. And so I think the whole concept of, you know, what being taught is manipulative and What's wrong with manipulative? Let, let well, me, let me make, hold on, hold yeah. on. Let me make this. Are you going to make a case for manipulation? I, I am. <laughs> there's, there's evil manipulation. When we talk about manipulation that's harmful, we mean one or more of the following things. Number one, misstating facts, saying that you're a, a surgeon when in reality you live in your mother's basement and you're unemployed. Number two, having a um, pressing down on people's pain and guilt mm. and fear and lack of belief in themselves that kind of thing and number three hiding an agenda saying oh yes i just want to be your friend in reality you want a wild right. oil orgy that's manipulation in a harmful way manipulation in a good way is simply man manipulation means to move with deliberateness so you have a sense of intent about yourself and the other person that you're going to create a bridge across and bring that person across into your world. Now my intent, I always say, I'm going to go play with that person. If they don't want to play with me, I let them go. Mm -hmm. That's on them, not on me. But within that playfulness, I have techniques. There's, they become second nature to me. I don't need to think about them. Mm -hmm. But just because someone isn't skillful yet, with a technique doesn't mean they have an evil intent. Don't confuse lack of skill with having a bad intent. Mm -hmm. It's just lack of skill. Give the people have the right to be stumbling and fumbling towards skill. This whole idea, and the whole idea that people are just being themselves in the romantic world, and that they think they're not being manipulated by popular media and songs right. and TV and movies and books. I love looking. Of course, where they're our being Western fucking manipulated, huh? Come from. I love looking at where the Western view of love has just come from. Eleanor of Aquitaine. We were discussing yeah, this. Exactly. It's a 13th century, 14th century concept. And from by the way, guys, you know the the other half, Plato. So it's like you can actually most of the truisms that we accept are just words that we throw around or phrases that we use around love. Yeah, and we were talking can, about. Yeah, this. you can directly track them back to where some guy at some point in time. Thought we them were up. and we were talking about this the other day that the Greeks looked into different words for love: mm -hmm. eros, which is sexual love; uh, agape, which is what Paul used in the New Testament to, to refer to the unconditional and unselfish love of the community and of other people, to be in service to others. There's agape, uh, and I forget all the various different Greek terms, but there's many different definitions, but the idea of romantic love mm. with all the rituals and courtship, this is something that's a construct of Western civilization. There may be something to be said for arranged marriages. <laughs> if you look at the failure rate of marriages here where we choose, but here's the thing. In a sense, all marriages are arranged because we're under the influence of propaganda. It's being arranged by Western culture. And I have learned, there's a really useful book that I would recommend to everyone called Breaking the Patterns of Depression. And not because you may be depressed, but because there's a chapter in there where Dr. Yapko, who's the author of the book, Dr. Michael Yapko, talks about how to be selective with people and don't immediately like think, wow, this person thrills me and I feel connected, therefore they must be the love of my life. He said that, fa that phrase you told me about, right? The phrase, feelings, feelings lie. lie. Yapko has the balls to say what's true, feelings lie. Because you could have a projected image of who this person is and you're falling in love with that image mm -hmm. and you're not noticing the cues that your friends are telling you to look for. 
The Greeks, Ovid, the Greek playwright, mm -hmm. made, he mocked love. He said it was a form of madness, and the Greeks considered it a form of madness. So the whole idea of just surrendering, throwing your judgment out the window, mm -hmm. and just, oh wow, what a wonderful person. Oh, this, this could be the one. <laughs>